son of a bitch. Trent, yeah, that, that, I uh, thought I could hold off for like a little bit, but no, you didn't show up. <laughs> All right, well, we're late. Seven minutes. Welcome to Plastic Fanatics. This is the Late Night Aftercast, episode 149. This is the... Uh, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Um, I'm uh, kind of tired right now. Uh, but uh, good blast of the past. We do have one. It's on the Justice League. That's going to be on the cartoon series. Just the first season. Um, I'm not a miracle worker. I wasn't able to get all of Unlimited. Um, there's a shit ton of toys with that, and um, it will be coming soon. But we're going to take a look at the first two seasons, or just Justice League, and um, look at the toys, look at some of the characters that we got, um, some of the differences, some of the changes that the creators decided to do. And we'll also take a look at news and um, you know toys and movies, toys, or TV shows and all that type of stuff, too. Uh, it's a two-man crew. That's how we roll here. Um, so Charles, welcome back. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Uh, just ready to come. I miss you guys just doing family shit last couple of weeks. So ready to get back on, on uh normal track. Well, it's good to have you back, man. Thank you. Did you, did you get anything new in the last couple of weeks? I mean, yeah, I got a, a few things. I got the uh, digital version of Gears of War 4, uh, digital version of Lego Jurassic World, and uh, SH Figure Arts Super Saiyan Vegeta. Okay, cool. So the the Super version is what you got for Vegeta? Uh, the big, the bulky uh, one? The super, just normal Super Saiyan. Oh, okay. Super Saiyan. Okay, so like the premium, the re-release. Uh, I know what you're talking. I, don't know if, I won't call. Yeah, it. I don't know if it's the premium, just normal Super Saiyan. Cool. I think they carry the premium colored ones there. All right. Nice. Awesome. Trent's here yet? No, Trent's is not here yet. All right. Give him another five minutes. Talk amongst yourselves, people. <laughs> All right. Well, for me. Um, I didn't really get a lot of toys. I was missing one of the dino bot chicks, one of the booby sources, which I, I thought I had them both. Uh. I was missing Ichara. <laughs> and so I, um, hit up Agabus, um, tried to use the coupons cause I'm a cheap bastard, um, that we got in the rock box. Couldn't make them work. I don't know if I'm just dyslexic, retarded. I don't know. I just couldn't get those codes to work. Um, but Chris Pinkerton helped me out, um, and um, I was able to achieve what I wanted to get, and um, really great. Got here really fast, um, so I, I liked it. Um, and on top of that, they uh, they gave me a new coupon, so shout out to Hanny for doing that. So that was pretty nice. Um, nice. Uh, packing peanuts again. I miss those days. My cats love those days. Um, but what else did I get? Oh, I got Star Wars Battlefront 2 Deluxe Edition for the PS4. We'll see if this game is good. Not good. I don't know. If not, I'll just let my son play it. He'll like it. Um, got an Xbox. What is that thing? An Xbox One S. Whatever. I don't know. Halo combo thing. Um, and then nice. I got the Super Min, Super NES Mini. Um, and then I got whatever that Deadpool thing is there. Um, the GameStop Deadpool, the <laughs> back in black, whatever the hell it's called. So, uh, um, I think that's it. That's all I got. Yeah. So, um, I'm hoping some other things will show up before Thanksgiving because you know, we don't want to get mail on that day on Thursday. So hopefully before Thursday, but. Got some Black Friday stuff I'm looking forward to getting. Come on, Trent, where are you? Damn it, son of a bitch. <laughs> All righty. Um, let's see. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do screen share. I'm going to gonna keep just bullshitting here. We <laughs> talk about everything and anything about nothing. Um, what else is there? Uh, uh, I did see at 
what was it Walmart? I think um, they're ramping up for Black Friday, which is weird. And I like the employees <laughs> in the electronics department because they're talking about what's on sale for Black Friday. So I'm just like listening. I'm like, oh, cool. All right, that's on sale. That's on sale. All right. Um, <laughs> I tried looking at my local targets. I have four in my area for the new Power of the Prime stuff. Didn't find a damn <laughs> thing. So that sucked. Um, uh, my Toys R Us, as shitty as it is, uh, finally got the two pack of Mary Jane and Spider Man. That's pretty awesome. Um, I, I saw that uh, in mine uh, yeah. the other day as, as well. And uh, but they still won't carry for some damn reason figure arts or storm collectible stuff. They're just hell bent on no Tamashi Nation. They're, <laughs> you know, um, so who knows? Uh, what else is there? Come on, man. Where are you, Trips? Clock's ticking. Mine can't. Don't make me, don't make yours, me start dancing and singing. <laughs> don't do it. Carry, uh, they carry uh, a ton of the Pops figures. Yeah. yeah it's the same thing with them. Um, I remember Hastings when they were around. They had a ton of the Pops stuff. And they were always on sale. Like, they couldn't. I mean, I essentially thought that they were just going to give that shit for free. Like, here you go for shopping at Hastings. No. I'm not. No, don't give that. I'm not taking that. So, um, but who knows? Um, let's see what else is there. I don't know what else. Um, oh, do not worry. We're not going to spoil, um, justice league. I haven't seen it yet. I'm probably going to see it tomorrow or, um, we're not going to spoil the punisher on Netflix. I've only gotten through episode nine. Um, so we won't spoil it too much. Maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about it, but we're not going to like go heavy into it so don't worry about that again the blast from the past i forgot to mention i will have the link in the description so you can bypass all this news tv show banter bullshit and go straight to the blast from the past and so let's just get into some screen shares because that will be trent's cue to join and um <laughs> we'll uh, go from there so yeah. uh, here we go don't forget to uh uh, hit that like button if you like. If you don't like, hit the like button. Um, brings a smile to my face. Kind of. Not really. All right, let's see here. You see what I'm seeing? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. All right, so uh, episode 149. Get right into it. I need to do my shout outs. Shout out to the Cool Table Network, like-minded network of podcasters who give you everything and anything you need about the geek world, collecting world, all that. Um, the shows that are part of the Cool Table Network. Every week I try and do a smooth way of trying to do that, but I am not a Jose. I'm not a Pinkerton. I, I need to take a speech comm class. God, I hated that class in college. Um, <laughs> But we have shows like Enter the Round, which is on Monday nights on the Rumble Collector's YouTube channel. They also have the Rock Hangout, the RC Hangout. Um, there's also uh, Figure Banging, which they just had an episode on Wednesday. It's every other Wednesday, but they had a show this last Wednesday. And it was Thursday. all about... Thursday. Thir yes, it was Thursday, but it's usually on Wednesdays. Uh, yeah, there was yeah. Scheduling um, conflicts, but they did do one. Uh, they did not want to disappoint, and they didn't. They looked at Terminus Giganticus, Fans Toys' Omega Supreme. Pretty cool. Um, other yes. shows in the network, we have Shattercast Uncut, which just celebrated a 200th episode last week. So congratulations, guys. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't one of the lucky callers. <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, we have Stasis Locked, which is also on uh, Wednesdays on Bricks on the Dollars YouTube channel, which... He does also have another Lego show, which or he has another podcast show, which is about Lego. Um, building up to, I think, I believe is that was called building up to. Yep, which he has up Paul C it. up to it. He has yeah. Paul C and Iron Claw on there with him. Um, we also have Nerd Ridge Radio. We also have uh, Toy Detox and Eight Weeks, and I think that's about it. Um, actually, there is something new coming, so uh, 
Uh, we'll look at that here in a second. But yeah, there it is, building up to it. Um, but building up to it airs. Um, it's not a live show. It's a pre-recorded show, but it drops usually every Friday morning, um, I believe is what Clutch said, on his YouTube channel, Bricks on the Dollar. So go check that out. Um, uh, I just saw this uh, in the Facebook groups. Cobra Law podcast coming in 2018. Pretty cool. Nathan Askill, Midi, Dust. Um, if you're familiar with the music and all that, they're going to have a podcast coming next year. Look forward to it. Um, so yes, indeed. Check that out. And there's some merchandise, new merchandise, actually. And I totally forgot to get the information for it. Um, <laughs> uh, we have some new merchandise on the Realm of Collectors web page, which you can see there at the bottom of my screen, realmcollectors.com. There is a new Scully, Beanie, whatever you want to call that. Um, it has the new logo on there. We also have a new hat. Um, it's a Velcro snap in the back, I believe. It's not a fitted. Um, but if you did pre-order a pull-up or a zip-up um, hoodie, which if you didn't get one, um, pre-orders are done. They um, ended yesterday. So if you didn't pick up one, um, too bad. So sad. Um, but if you did pick up one, you could add a hat or a beanie onto it for, I believe, $12 a piece. Um, just go to the website and um, go through what you need to do there. If not, um, oh, man, I'm sorry. I I've, I've forgot how much they were going for. Um, I don't want to misquote something. So check it out. Um, so there you go. But you're really cool. New product in. It's uh, it's awesome. Um, we had a we had the beanies last year. Um, there was a black and a charcoal. Um, this time it's it's um, I think it's just a, a black. But it looks cool. Looks good. Um, yeah. All the information is on the website. So go check it out. All right, moving into C Dub stuff. Ah, <sighs> good old Supergirl, DC Legends, Flash, Arrow, all that type of stuff. Not a lot going on. They are pushing for the new crossover, which is going to be airing, I believe, next. Is it next week or the week after? I think it's the week after. Um, it's not Thanksgiving break. Um, so, um, Monel's back and Supergirl. So, hopefully, now Kara can stop her little bleeding heart and everything. So, hopefully, did get to see a cool flashback episode as far as the relationship between her and her sister, Alex, um, how they kind of grew together and such. And it was kind of, um, I got, in a way, I'm, I don't know, not impactful, but it was, it was pretty good for what, um, for the characters and such. And to see how John or John Jones, you know, or Marsh Manhunter was actually a uh, part of their lives even back then. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, moving over to flash. Um, Shit's going down now. Uh, the Thinker is out and about. Um, Barry and the rest of the gang, Barry and the gang, are um, pretty much on par of finding out who he is. But um, I think Barry's world is going to get rocked here soon. So um, we'll see what happens. But it's pretty cool. Things are going down. Um, still, the, the elongated man's suit is so horrendously ugly. I'm hoping they do something with that. <laughs> yes, I, I saw the picture of it. I'm like, Wow. And it's like, wow, they just <laughs> just sad. Um and yeah, that's about it. I don't can't remember anything else with Flash. While he's out of the picture. Arrow Arrow's pretty good. Um I like the two part story arc with Deathstroke and his son. Um but it just kind of ended kind of just He's going to Deathstroke. Slade just goes off trying to find his son, and he finds out he has another son. Um, and uh, that's about it. Um, so not not a lot of, like, hopefully he comes back, you know, or anything like that. Who knows? Um, right here, we're looking at the picture of the crossover of um, Crisis on Earth X, which will be across all four platforms. As you can see back here, there's the ray. So that's interesting. 
um, with Oliver up front. You got Supergirl, Alex, Black, or, um, White Canary, Felicity, Iris. Not sure why Iris is there. Or Alex, I can see there. Um, Vibe. You got Heat Wave, and you got um, the Adam and um, I forgot Wells. So looks good. So we'll see. Hopefully, this all takes place. During or the catalyst is uh, Barry and Iris's wedding, mm. so we'll see what happens. All right, Black Lightning is coming to CW. It's premiering next year, January sixteenth, to be exact. So look forward to that. Um, this was supposed to be on what Fox, but um, got pushed around, um, and CW landed in. Not really sure if they're gonna how they're gonna include it into their world. But most likely it's going to be a different Earth and all this type of stuff. So we'll see. It would have been cool if they could have somehow put him into Crisis X or um, Crisis on Earth X. That would have been kind of cool. But yeah. I don't think there's any talk about that. Do you watch any of the C-Dub stuff, Charles? No. All right. Awesome. <laughs> I'm glad I've inspired you. <laughs> Um, we found out that there's going to be more trilogy. There's going to be another trilogy in the Star Wars world. Um, there's also supposed to be a what did I read? A live action um, story, uh, some type of show that I believe that's going to air on Disney's own streaming network um, later on. So that's interesting. Um, yeah, dreaming uh, Disney streaming service will include a live action Star Wars TV show, which is something fans have wanted for a very long time. Um, and there has been rumor that Marvel's going to pull all their stuff out of the Netflix, but they're not going to do that um, yet. So, and speaking of uh, some Marvel Netflix stuff, Punisher dropped this Friday, thirteen episodes, so it's not that little small package that we got with Defenders. Unfortunately, there are no defenders that are going to show up. Uh, this is just all about Frank Castle, his relationship with Micro. Um, we do get Karen Page, if you remember from Daredevil and such. Um, but we do get more in-depth story of what transpired when he was in the service, what led to his family being killed. Opposed to kind of, we got, you know, the story a little bit in Daredevil season two, but this is fleshed out even more. There's a lot more shit going, going down. So um, definitely worth checking out and such. And it doesn't disappoint. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, and I won't, won't go into any more detail of it, but not bad. All right. Dragon Ball Super. Um, we saw last week that. We had the fusion between um, Kale and Califa, or yeah. whatever her name is, <laughs> Kefla that they became. And then we find out that how can that be legit? And um, they decided to, the um, little dudes here, Zeons or whatever the hell they're called, decided to, they liked it so much that they're going to allow it to not you know, be yeah. disqualified, the Xenons. So they decided to uh, keep it in there. Doesn't mean that obviously, like Supreme Kai is going to whip out, you know, a, 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 one of those earrings, Patara earrings, whatever they're called. Yeah. So we're going to see like Goku merge with Vegeta and all that. But let's see, there's been t the only merger that I've known is there's talk about Piccolo merging with those other Namikians, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff, I don't. So. Um, we got to see Goku go back to his Ultra Instinct to take on uh, Kefla, and he's essentially going to just, I believe, kick her ass. I mean, that, that's going to be. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see her get kicked out of the ring finally. Yeah, she, <laughs> she's going to get knocked out. But that, um, when he awakens his powers again, awakens the, uh, the beast here, uh, Jiren, to wake up and decide he wants to compete again. So that's pretty cool. You're right there. You still there, Charles? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> cool. 
Um, there's also been some talk that Vegeta is supposed to be powering up also. We're going to see a little power increase with him. Um, Man, don't I want to see him it's get gonna... a new form or something. Or something. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I'd love to see him go in Ultra in- Instinct also. Um, many people were speculating just for the fact that he trained with Whis first before Goku. That he should have learned yeah. some more abilities and and such. Um, but and as he hasn't really taken the tournament um, seriously yet, he's um, just buying time. I I have no idea, but hopefully we'll see something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, I'm going to butcher her name, and I apologize. Uh, Hiromi Tashiru, the voice actress, uh, the Japanese voice actress of Bulma, passed away. She was Bulma oh. for 31 oh, yeah. years. Damn, 31 years. Some people don't realize that Dragon Ball, the whole Dragon Ball world, has been around since the 80s. You know, yeah. And such, but... All right. More Dragon Ball stuff. We have um, GameStop exclusive. Basically, redecos of their Dragon Ball stars. Goku, Super Saiyan Goku, and Super Saiyan of Vegeta. I don't know. Do you like this color scheme? All right, that's awesome. Kind of cool. Yeah, well, yeah, it is cool. It's... I believe they're being sold individually. I don't think they're two packs. It's yeah. interesting. Um, I would rather had an exclusive, like maybe a Super Saiyan Blue Vegito. Um, something, yeah, something like that. That would go with the theme of what we're getting in the next wave, right? Which would be kind of cool because we're supposed to be getting um, Samasu and uh, Goku Black and all that. Oh yeah, these aren't too bad. You have any of these figures? No, I, I saw my Toys R Us had some uh, had some of the Dragon Ball Stars figures. But I, I might wait till I, I see them all, or, or I don't know. I might pick them up one day. All right. They're not bad. They're not bad at all. Um, I mean, it's it just reminds me of what Bandai has also done with their uh, their Power Rangers line, their Legacy line. Um, yeah, you can either get the figure arts, or this is you know you could get the Legacy larger scale. Also, price difference, quality, also, but I mean, they're they're not bad. Yeah. In ways. All right. Uh, this is just a quick image I found of Marvel Legends Black Widow. This is the uh, vehicle two pack. She comes with two heads. It looks like, which is nice. Other yeah. than that, um, it. Uh, really looking forward to the Ghost Rider version. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure everyone who collects Marvel Legends or such is waiting for that. Um, we haven't had a bike for him for a while, so it's going to be nice. But there's, there's her bike and everything. Damn. That zipper on her is just going down a little farther. Ooh, she doesn't come with any weapons, though. <laughs> Weird. Um, now, this is just a rumor, but um, they, Mattel, DC Collectibles, uh, maybe canceling. I, I don't want to say for sure that they are canceling the Joker mobile that's part of the Batman animated series, um, which is unfortunate. Uh, but seems like for right now, there is a rumor out there that it might be canceled. So, that kind of sucks. I don't know. I thought it'd be a kind of a cool novelty item with the Batmobile. Yeah. And all that. So. Kind of reminds me what they some of you know we had some cancellations in the icons, and then it was kind of revamped in some else. All right, SH Figure Arts news here. We have Flash and Derpy ass Superman from Justice League. I'm sorry, I do not like that head sculpt. I, I don't know. Yeah. Weird. Doesn't I don't know. Maybe it looks like it. Maybe it doesn't. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe if he had a mustache, maybe I'd like it more. There you go. Um, I think the one thing I don't like the most about it is the cape. I wish that they wouldn't have used yeah. the white stitching 
or where the wire is. So it, you see it everywhere. I mean, and all that. Like, I just don't, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it's too big. For the yeah. Here. Yeah, it does. I don't, I don't remember it being that, that huge. But it is poseable because it does have the wire in there. Um, it doesn't look like it has the, um, the uh, weird kind of bend that the uh, Christian Bale Batman, Figures Batman has. Um, no. For some reason, I don't like the the wire up by the collar or the shoulders. They don't they don't like flow downward that much. They pop up constantly. Um, so it looks kind of weird, but um, that looks pretty cool. I do like that with his um his angry face. Yeah. The god looking all that. So. And here's the flash. Flash looks pretty good. And if you got some of those Tamashi Nation um, effect pieces, like the lightning yeah. and all that, it'll look even better. Touch with that pose right there. That'd be perfect yep. for it. Yep. It's not bad of a costume. Suit. No. All that. Curious if uh, Barnes and Noble get these in. All right, Mezco. I believe this uh, went up for pre-order. What yesterday? Maybe. I don't know. This is the uh, Justice League Aquaman. I am curious to see if this is the if the movie is all about Aquaman mm. or something like. Aquaman and his leaders or something. I don't know. Doesn't look bad. No. I'm, not in, I'm not into Mezco, so. That's a pretty cool looking picture of him under the water with his uh, trident. I still don't see him on a seahorse. <laughs> It comes with a mother box, the Atlantean mother box, which is cool. It comes with four pairs of hands. Obviously, it comes with the stand, which all the uh, Mesco do, and then it's Triton. All right, we got some Bucky O'Hare news. Uh, boss fights coming out with the Storm Toad Trooper. This is a four inch line. We already have Bucky O'Hare and Jenny. Um, and now you can have yourself a trooper. Funko's making these uh, dwarf looking Mortal Kombat. X figures. They're five and a half inches um, tall. They're much like He Man, the old school He Man. Yeah. And even the packaging's reminiscent of it, also. <laughs> so that's pretty interesting. Uh, Storm Collectible, Street Fighter Five. We're getting Alex. Um, cool. Uh, but I'd rather, can't wait to see this mold being used for T Hawk from. Super Street Fighter, which I believe is what they got the license for. So, not a big, huge Alex fan. Robocop versus Terminator box set here. This is from NECA. This is the one that comes with the Terminator, the Endo Cop, and the Terminator Dog. We've seen lots of pics of this. And now we're finally seeing the box art and the box and everything. So, all right. In the Transformers news, this is where it's been played out. I'm just going to showcase these pictures of Masterpiece Dinobot. Here he is. $250. Uh, whether he goes down in price, whatever. Um, he looks yeah. good. He is expensive, but he, do, he does look show accurate. Yeah. Um, that's not bad. The back of it looks pretty clean. Uh, I'm really curious about what this, if this is going to be textured or so, what type of material they're going to use yeah. for his arms for the, the actual dino mode. But everything else looks good. Paint, everything. Articulation. Uh, comes with a slew of accessories, which we'll see here at the end. 
spinning action with his tail. So you get the shield. Yep. Green eye laser effect. Which I thought was interesting that out of I believe all of the Beast Wars characters on the show, he's the only one that had laser eyes. Is weird. Yeah. Like, why yeah. didn't anyone else get laser eyes? Mostly everyone else had to have a weapon of some sort. Right. <laughs> he didn't, though. Except he had his sword. Um, but yeah. Comes with a stand, so you can do some dynamic poses. That's pretty cool. Yep. Uh, dino mode looks okay in certain spots, but... Yeah. It's... <laughs> Big spot right there by the by the uh back by the leg. Yeah, don't yeah, the hind leg there. Yeah. Yeah. I just... Um yeah, I don't I just I don't know. And then the side looks way too panelly. <laughs> yeah, even the the front of the chest and everything else. Um he does have some expressions in his eyes, which you can um rotate, which we'll see a picture from the uh generations magazine that came out for twenty eighteen. Um, the butt side of the dino mode. <laughs> kind of cool how his hands tuck into his back of his knees or calves. Well, that's a calf. I don't know what the hell that is. Knee, I guess. Yeah. It's interesting. Tail shot. You can use a stand for raptor mode. There he is with the team. The other masterpieces, Optimus Primal, Cheetor. He's big. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. All right, here's some pics from the magazine. So you get to see how he stacks up against the other two masterpieces, but also with the Legends Rhinox, which is really out of scale. It's a point. <laughs> and then um, Rat Trap. But just in case. And transformations on how it works. Now, the designer, I believe, for this wants to work on Megatron, so that's interesting. Uh, but there's that's how you switch out his eyes, lift up his top, his head, Dino mode, turn around. It's like uh, Grimlock. Yep. And then his eyes, facial expressions, and such. Quite a few. You can connect the tailpiece to the back, much like the toy. And there's all the stuff you get with them. So you get the stand, you get the golden disc, you get three other heads, his tail sword, the eye blast, more accessory stuff to um, manipulate the stand and all that. So I don't know. And then that's what I was talking about. Up next, they want to do Megatron, Beast Megatron. Sunstreaker. Um, I, that's pretty cool, but I don't know. It's been a while since we've seen a masterpiece, an original masterpiece um, drop, but I guess I for, I've kind of forgot about Sunstreaker. So there you go. You can have yeah, him in his regular Lambor mode, <laughs> or you can have him souped up, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Are you in on this? Uh, I'll, I'll wait till, till uh, it comes out and uh, to see a couple of reviews. Okay. I thought but you guys were wait for it for Toys R Us. <laughs> no. All right. I forgot. Are you in on this? I know about. If they drop the price, yes. But oh, as really? for right now, no. Not at all. All right. Cool. Nice. All right. Transformation pick there. Again, this is from the Generations book, 2018. It's a really good book. If you guys can get your hands on it, usually um, it's a collection of all the stuff that's been out and such. Um, I, I saw this. I don't know if you know about this, Charles, the whole Power of the Primes. You get the little collector cards, but I guess they're going to have different or variations of cards packaged with each character. 
So yeah. let's say, for instance, Alita 1 here, she comes with the Vector Prime card, and it tells you what power she gets from that um, item, whatever the hell it is. So it's interesting. I don't know. Yeah. Not enough that I want to buy 12 of variations yeah, or whatever, yeah. you know, of the of these figures, but it's interesting. Yeah. So put a little more collecting into it. And then we also have uh, Shattered Glass Rodimus here, which is leader class. We saw the packaging before, but there's some pictures of it again. So, a straight up redeco of yeah. Rodimus, except for the head sculpt there. Well, like, like the vehicle modes, but like you said last week, that that robot mode is just you know, a lot like of the stuff wrong with <laughs> he can well, grab stuff. himself right there. Yeah. Like Nicholas Belly <laughs> with another set of arms. <laughs> I just a lot a lot of shit wrong with that robot mode, but the, the vehicle modes look good, especially the hot rod mode. That one yeah. that looks real good. I just I don't think they screwed up with the robot mode. Yeah. Alright, here's some Dinobots seen these uh that grimlock oh god damn i don't yeah, know if they the, ever look at it but geez. the the grimlock and the, and the slag just looks stupid grimlock looks worse i think i mean look at this yeah Whoa, yeah oh yeah. gosh um but i just wanted to showcase that uh one this hasbro employee has decent clean nails i'm glad that they picked someone they didn't have <laughs> could have cleaned up the cuticle a little bit more but um just how it trans it combines into Volcanus or whatever the hell he's called. Yeah. Who gives a shit a kiss. Um, but it's interesting. I, I just don't know. This looks really horrible right there. Yeah. That leg joint. Yeah. But again, it is a product for kids and everything else and we are getting Dinobots a full team instead of just getting a Grimlock so that's pretty nice yeah you like that um, and I mean I guess it works getting special Ultra Magnus here this is by 3A 16 inches tall this is a limited 500 um, product run I believe um, a little expensive just a little uh, it's got 59 points of articulation, 30% die cast. It's got LED wow. features. Pretty. You're an Ultra Magnus fan. Do the Iron Man pose? Thank God. <laughs> can I do a super kick? If I can, I'm on. I'm on board. All right, fans hobby here. Power Baser, unfortunately, has been delayed. Um, I think till the end of December, maybe into next year. I'm not sure. But it has been really. Mm. Looks good though. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I'm I'm getting over the fact that his legs are right there. Right. That he can smell his own feet or whatever. <laughs> but it's all good. I love the fact that he's got a really sweet ass non powered up mode. And he's yeah. got a really a decent uh, power up mode. So yeah. each mode looks good. It doesn't sacrifice over the other. Um, if you're no. familiar with the original G1, I mean, you, you want it in the super mode, whether it's, you know, you're having a super gen or you call it Power Master Optimus Prime, whatever. Yeah. But um, Aerial Bots, you in on this? Fans Toys? I'm definitely curious. Experian was my favorite Autobot combiner, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very curious to see how they're going to what they're going to do with, with them and how hope they, hope they do that silver bolt right. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and not just a bo box on, under the under the plane, but it's fan stories, so we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, we're going to be waiting for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. I, I'm like yeah. you. I'm an aerial bot fan. And I'm um, looking at silver bolt here, which it's nice to see the uh, the torso first instead of the limbs. Um, yeah, 
I've always been a fan of the Aerobots. Um, I've loved all the episodes that we got back in the day. War Dawn, obviously the key to Vector Sigma, the introduction of them and everything else. And such. So, And they're just cocky little bastards. Or at least Slingshot was. <laughs> yeah. And Silverbow yeah. being a puss and everything else. But they, they formulated into an elite team into like season three. Um, yeah. Which was really badass. But there, there's the back of it. Such of Silverbolt. And you can manipulate the nose of the plane so you can get that authentic Concord look. Nice. Trent, I think you're fashionably late. I don't think he's showing up. Yeah. Uh, it's been traded. Here's all the jets again. The only one I'm concerned with is Slingshot, which is down here. He's the Harrier. I I don't know if I like this front end. I don't I don't know. Other than that, though, the rest of them: Air Raid, Fireflight, Skydive, and Silverbolt look good. Yeah, and, uh, we'll see. I mean, I'm I'm waiting for price. I'm waiting for. You know, time frame, all that. I mean, we saw yeah. these. We saw a lot of these pictures on ETR already. So um, here they are. Um, here's a digi bash of Silverbolt next to the original G1, courtesy of Chim. And there we got Silverbolt in its vehicle mode. Yeah, this was a one combiner I really wanted when I was a kid. <laughs> oh yeah. I had to pretend my GoBots were <laughs> were aerial bots. That was how sad I was. Yeah. And then I'd use the Guardian um was it Guardian? I think it was the Guardian um power suits and shit to create myself <laughs> a superior. <laughs> oh, those are the days of imagination. Uh yep. Zeta Toys. This is their air raid. I like this picture with the nose cone up. I don't know about you, Charles, but I'm just yeah. a stickler for that. Here we see the nose cone down in the back. It looks good, though. Yeah. A lot of kibble, though, on his legs. But it's it's the wings, how they fold in on themselves and everything else. But there he is next to MP10, so he's a big boy. I didn't know he's that big. Yeah. Up to his shoulder. I don't know if that's too big or not. I'd like to see him next to Ironhide. That size. Mm. See what he yeah. looks like. Yeah. Um, and I, I know the, the whole thing about the jets bigger than cars, all that type of crap, but come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you need to do something. But yeah, the jet mode does look good. F-15. Top of it looks like a plane. Bottom of it looks like a freaking robot. Awesome. Yeah. That's an aerial bot. Wouldn't have any other way. All right, so here's some comparisons between G-Creation's new Ronin, which is their Drift, which is a digital render, to Mastermind Creation's... His name is Stray? I didn't know that. Really? I thought his name was Alpha. I don't know. Maybe that's Wing. Huh. But there he is next to Mastermind's Creations Drift. Um, I kind of like G Creations a little bit more. I know that there, I think there's a difference in size here, though. But um, I do like the smaller shoulders on the G Creation. Along with the smaller scarabs on the side, the hips. Yeah. Both look good, though. I mean, vehicle mode looks. I don't know. The Ronin looks pretty good. Looks more speed racer. The other one looks like something I'd see in maybe, I don't know, Tron. I don't know. <laughs> and then here's just the different versions out there. They, <laughs> they put the original Hasbro in there. Right on. <laughs> Which is good, but still. 
I do like G Creation. I mean, he's slender. He's I don't know. He's not as bulky, and that just reminds me more of the character because he's a. I don't know. Oh, every time I say I don't know, take a shot. MS Toys, Magic Square, Legends Class, setting themselves up for a lot of stuff they need to produce. Hopefully, they can get around to it. But we've seen pictures of this before. They're coming out with the uh, Grapple Inferno. Very G1 cartoon like look, I believe. Beachcomber, um, Sea Spray, Ultra Magnus, Cyclonus, and they got four out of the five Stunticons. And we're just missing Motormaster there. So, all right, that's it. That's all. There's not a lot of news. Uh, so, yay. It's a great show. Awesome. Have a good Thanksgiving, guys. It's been fun. <laughs> If you celebrate Thanksgiving, um, or not, or if you're going to have a turkey or a turducket, it's pretty cool, too. Um, yeah. Okay. Moving on to everyone's favorite, the blast from the past. Uh, da, 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 da. Still no trance. Uh, I know. It's I want to show up. Yeah. Uh, it's all good. Hopefully he's all right. I mean, I don't want anything to happen to him. He fell asleep, though. Then, yeah, I want something to happen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, um, I'm just kidding. Terrence has been here since the beginning. Hopefully all is well with him. Um, so... Unless he's gone to the dark side to another podcast that happens on this day. That would be bad. No, I'm just kidding. All right, you see the blast in the past? Big glass of jazz. Charles is gone. It's just me. I'm, I'm still here. All right, you see it? You see the blast in the past? Yep. All right, good. All right, we're going to try and do this in a sexy voice. <laughs> so don't, uh, don't blame me if your girl decides to. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so Blast of the Past Justice League, we're looking at. And yes, I did say that we're going to be taking a look at the cartoon from 2001 um, to 2004. Or did I? Maybe I meant we're going to take a look at the. Not so great live action by CBS that came out in 1997. Wow. For all you guys <laughs> that don't like the C dub stuff, it's not that bad compared to this. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, who do we got here? We got the Atom. We got. Uh, who the hell is that? That Vixen? I don't know who that the chick in the green is. Yeah, I don't either. I can't tell. Or is it Jade? No, I don't know. Obviously, we got the, the big. Bulky flash in the middle. Maybe a little more <laughs> slender. Yeah. Uh, and then we got the Kyle Rayner. Or no, maybe he's not the Kyle Rayner. Maybe he's the ass. Um, Guy Gardner. <laughs> Green Lantern. Um, and then we got Dove, it looks like. On the end. No Hawk, though. Weird. So, that's what we got. Um, a great series that didn't really pan out. Unfortunately, I guess the world wasn't ready back in the late 90s for uh, the Justice League. Um, fast forward to now, are we ready for a live action movie in with uh, for the Justice League starring, you know, Ben Affleck and all these guys? We'll see. I hope I like it. I remember, I mean, I gave BVS a four. Um, and I have my reasons. If you love it, you fanned all over it, that's awesome. I didn't. I didn't get any satisfaction. Um, so out of it, um, and I, I and I need to. I'm looking at. I'm going to go into Justice League, trying to look at it not as a catch up to Marvel. Just a straight up. This is what they're doing. This is how they're creating their world again. We'll see. But I don't know. All right. Let's get to the real stuff here. Justice League. <laughs> Bruce Timm, Paul Denny, 
Dwayne McDuffie, um, uh, the Godfather, Bruce Tim, obviously. This is the continuation from the Batman animated series, the Superman animated series, even Static Shock. We got into Justice League. We have all these heroes come together. A little bit of a twist, though, um, which we'll get into in a second. But two seasons, 52 episodes. They aired from 2001 to 2004. Cartoon Network. Um, and such. And then there went in, they went into another season, which was Justice League, or another series, Justice League Unlimited, which had a larger cast, which we're not going to be talking about this week. So I apologize if you guys were like, I want to look at Green Arrow or Captain Adam or Captain Marvel. That ain't happening. Sorry. <laughs> or the Legion of Doom with Grodd and Luthor always going after each other. But this is still good. And um, I did like the series. They weren't like one and done. They were majority two-parters, even, you know, five-part story arcs such. Um, and they did relate to the comics and such. So that's pretty badass. I like that. I don't like straying too far away from it. Um, did you watch the series, Charles? I know we talked a little bit, but. Yes. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you enjoyed it? Oh yeah, right. okay. That's pregnant pause. Yeah, a lot, a lot of good episodes. Pregnant. It's been <laughs> been a while since I've seen them, but got them on DVD. Just really enjoyed a lot of the story episodes, characters. And did a great, great job with it. Cool. All right, so Brave and the Bold. Justice League was born out of that comic book series, number 28. Different cast altogether. You see here we had Superman. We had Wonder Woman, Batman, Aquaman, Flash, Martian Manhunter, and Green Lantern, which is the Hal Jordan taking on Starro. That was their first uh, big baddie, which is interesting. Um, change up for the Justice League, which I actually liked. Um, Green Lantern was a little bit like, okay, they're going with Stewart. All right, John Stewart. Cool. Um, I am a Hal Jordan fan, but I know the whole thing about the parallax and all that type of stuff was occurring. And he's, you know, what was he? He turned into, um, oh crap, I forgot what he became. What did he be? You know what he became, Charles, after he died? He became parallax, came back, sacrificed himself, and then he became, uh, it's that ghost specter type thing. Specter. That's it. Yeah, specter, I think, oh. for a little bit. But um, the cast here, we got Superman, we got Batman, we got The Flash. We have, The Flash is Wally West. They wanted a more comedic um, tone to the show, so they, they installed that into Flash. And I will say, talking to some people about Justice League, they revert to the show as far as like my Green Lantern was John Stewart, my Flash was Wally West. You know who's Barry Allen? You know who's who's Hal Jordan? Yeah, all that type of stuff. Uh, we have Martian Manhunter. We have Wonder Woman, which was changed up for the series. If you've seen the first story arc, Secret Origins, um, she's the rookie and um, coming into play to help out the uh, leaguers here. And we have Hot Girl, which was interesting. Um, to say the least, yep. as far as the character is concerned. But um, voice director was Andrea Romano. She's done pretty much everything that deals with DC in the animation world. So he's a godmother. Uh, the voice actors, we had Kevin Conroy. He's reprising his role as Batman from the Batman animated series. Are you a fan of his, Charles? Like yep. Him? Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's Batman. That's your Batman. Not the Christian Bale? Yep. All right, cool. Um, and then we have Hot Girl, Maria uh, Canals, which I saw her on an episode of Big Bang Theory, which was interesting. <laughs> it's weird to see live action shows and you're like, that voice sounds so familiar. And then you go to your trusty little box and punch in her name and you find out, holy shit, she was Hot Girl. So <laughs> it's interesting. Susan Eisenberg played Wonder Woman, Phil Lamar great actor love him in um, mad tv 
Green Lantern was his character. Carl Lumley was John Jones. George Newbern was Superman. So they didn't get Tim Daly, unfortunately, from the original Superman animated series. They came up with uh, this new guy, George Newbern. Um, I'm in a butcher name, too, so I apologize. But um, Tim Daly was working on something else at the time, and he was not able to reprise his role as Superman. And they tried to change up the look of Superman, tried to make him a little bit older, which didn't take. So if you notice season one to season two, there's a little bit of differences as far as the look, especially in his face. Uh, and Michael Rosenbaum was the Flash, which you know. Or from- Lex Luthor from Smallville. Yep, that is right, which is cool. All right. Yeah. Many ways to get the series. Um, they were released individually as far as just pocket episodes that you could get back in the day. And these are all uh, authentic releases, and then you could get them in box sets. Season one, season two, 52 episodes and all. Or you can get the whole damn complete collection all in huh. one box set. Or if you want, um, I think there's also a Blu-ray. Um, but, and then you also got the Justice League Starcross movie. Um, one interesting bit about... Oh, and then they got these individual things I saw at Walmart. I thought, what the hell? I'll throw them in. Um, <laughs> that just... They um, specialized on just the character on the box. So like Superman, Flash, Wonder Woman, Batman. There was supposed to be a movie yeah. that was supposed to connect the two series. So Justice League and Justice League Unlimited in 2004 unfortunately that movie um didn't really um come about as far as for the show it did come out in um their own dc animation which um, was crisis on two earths but that storyline was supposed to be integrated into the justice league story arc Mm. and it was supposed to be about the crime syndicate and it was supposed to give us a little more in-depth on how Wonder Woman got her invisible plane and such like that. But the crime syndicate was too close to what they were coming up with, with the justice Lords. And so we didn't see that. And if you know, the crime syndicates, Ultraman, Owlman, Superwoman, all that. So, yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. Let's go into some characters and let's see if anyone has these comic books. So we have Superman. He was first introduced in the comic books in Action Comics number one. Came out in 1938. I'm sure you could go find it at your local comic book shop. Might be more than 10 cents, though. (laughs) Yeah. But main characters, you always have to have the Trinity. So, And I didn't put the Trinity in the order. So we have Flash here again, Wally West. Throughout the entire series, they did not know each other's identities until the very last story arc which was in season two of the star cross movie when they finally really re, you know revealed themselves to each other when batman's like you know you're clark kent you're wally west you know all this kind of a crime thing they're all like surprise yeah. and such and i remember wonder woman saying oh we red hair to wally it suits you but he was really um first introduced in flash comics 110 in 1959 Not too bad. This would be a great comic book if you have it for Batman here. Again, voiced by Kevin Conroy. Detective Comics 27 that came out in 1939. I'm giving you the comic books just for the fact of knowing how old these characters are. Yeah, yeah. And how long they've been around. But um, Justice League did a great job bringing these characters fleshed out. As far as other non-Batman Superman. Um, right. They have the animated series. But, um, no Robin, unfortunately, so you didn't get your superpower, super friends kind of like little like dynamic duo. Which, oh well. Wonder Woman. I did like what they did with her origin and such for Themyscira. Oh, that's another thing on um, DC Legends, I forgot on C-Dub. They introduced Themyscira. They took hey. Helen of Troy there. I think it was Helen of Troy. Um, she didn't want to go back because they were all fighting. <laughs> that was the whole story arc. <laughs> Um, and so the one gal decided, okay, I'll take you to this place. And it was Themyscira. It's like, you don't have to worry. There's no men here. It's like, oh, this is perfect. And it was pretty cool. <laughs> and it was, it was a little beach kind of scene, kind of reminiscence of, from Wonder Woman and such. But, um, all right. So here's Wonder Woman here. 
she came out. Um, her first introduction was All Star Comics number eight, 1941. Back in the day. Parks and Manhunter, John Jones. Detective Comics, uh, 225. He had a pretty good story. Um, I don't know, um, characterization, I guess, as far as fleshing him out as being this lone, not depressed, but he, you know, he, he's the last survivor of Mars, of the Great yeah. Martian. And um, I kind of liked, he, we'll, we'll talk about it more in Justice League Unlimited, but it's, it's kind of cool. I wasn't a huge fan of Martian Manhunter until I, I saw this show. Like, yeah, right. that's kind of cool. I like him. I mean, we talked about it in superpowers. He was kind of the peg warmer for the superpowers um, figures. That when you go to the store, you're like, yeah, I don't want Marsh Manor. No, where's I'll take anyone else. <laughs> so, all right. And part of the team also was John Stewart as the Green Lantern, which was pretty cool, especially the fact that he. He didn't have to wear a mask. Everyone knew him. And he got he he basically brought to the team that military style by the book type of um mentality. Kept Flash in line. Flash is funnier than hell. If you've seen the first episode, how he's flirting with Diana, Wonder Woman is hilarious. <laughs> um and everything else. So uh, his first uh, introduction was Green Lantern 87, 1971, again, voiced by Phil Lamar. Um, also, which was interesting, I don't know if you liked it or not, Charles, but the little uh, love story that we were uh, developing between Mr. Uh, Stewart here and Hot Girl. Yeah. You like that? Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. I forgot to mention uh, Justice League also took um, it was a much like Batman and Superman the animated series and all that type of stuff. It was a more uh, um, had adult I don't want to say adult themed but it was um, a little more mature than your Saturday yeah. morning Super Friends Superpowers type show. I mean it, you can see the progression throughout all the DC stuff looking at Super Friends going right. into Superpowers going into Batman going into Justice League all that so um and then we have hot girl here which is um oh excuse me she's in all-star comics number five back in the day of 1941 uh, uh she did have a cameo in flash comics as um oh man uh i forgot her name now Oh crap! What's her name? I want. I don't want to say Kendra, not Kendra Sanders. Oh shoot! You remember what uh, her name was, Charles? Hot girl. Um. What they call her? I forgot her name. Her original name. Um. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're professionals. I don't it's, it's been a while since I've seen it. That's her name. I could yeah, do, yeah. Say you're a hall. All right, cool. Ah, damn senior moments. Fucking Alzheimer's. <laughs> all right, yeah. say you're a hall. Um, that's the version that we got, um, and I I like that more. And again, yeah, we didn't get to see Hawkman until in the next. Um, series, but we got Aquaman here, which I I really enjoyed uh, the whole development yeah. between his Atlantean world mixing with the human world or the surface dwellers, and then how you know he gets his hook of a hand. I thought that was really cool that the inner they actually put that in there. Yeah, yeah, that was that was badass. Uh, he was from More Fun Comics. 73 1941 i love that name of that comic i think that should come back um dr fate was also there we also saw dr fate though in superman animated series uh, he's from more fun comics number 55 voiced by oded fier um, again i'm butchering yeah. bit. you know him from the mummy or deuce bigelow <laughs> yep good old deuce bigelow 
mommy uh NC, uh, uh ncis yep he's, uh uh covert affairs he's quite a few things stalker so i can say jones you sound like you're <laughs> no just no just i i've seen him a bunch of things cool. shows i was into uh metamorpho got an episode with him he's from brave and the bold 57 1965 he's voiced by tom sizemore it's pretty cool um and this was a pretty a pretty good episode he didn't stay on to the team though unfortunately no one really did the main man came back from superman animated series he came um what was it uh the hereafter episode where superman supposedly dies and but is uh thrusted into the future with uh vandal savage and the main man here lobo decides he needs to uh help out the justice league and because they need a new strong man so he comes into play and he's from um he was originally in the comic books from omega man 3 that was 1983 voiced by brad garrett so bad and uh the demon here etrigan He is uh, from Demon 1, 1972, voiced by Michael T. Weiss. The Blackhawks. Military Comics, number 1, 1941. That was pretty cool. And then we had Sergeant Rock here. Our version of Fury. Our Army at War. Huh. So that came out in 1959. Fred Dreyer was the voice of Sergeant Rock. Remember the episode with the Justice Guild of America? All right. I think. I, I do. think so. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice little um, homage to kind of the golden age of the JSA, the Justice um, Society of America. So we got um, Tom Turbine there looking at uh, this picture right here. So Tom Turbine, the Green Guardsman, Catman, Black Siren. Not to be confused with the Black Siren that we know now in the scene dub. Yeah. Um, that's okay. No, this is Tom Turbine. Sorry. This is the streak right there. The fast guy <laughs> wearing the football helmet. Tom Turbine would have his powers through his belt. Such. It's a cool episode. Um, again, two part story art. I do advise if you've never seen the Justice League cartoon series, Check it out. It, it, it's, it is worth seeing. Um, oh, yeah. If you're a fan of Batman animated series, if you're a fan of like even the DC animation stuff, the movies, um, it is definitely worth checking out. I mean, there's some really good episodes. Uh, we got Orion here from The New Gods, number one, 1971. He's voiced by Ron Perlman. <laughs> Hellboy himself. Good old Dark Side's son. And then we have some other supporting cast from the New Gods. We have High Father, Ray, Light Ray, and um, Forager there. Kilowog, Green Lantern Corps, 201, 1986, voiced by Dennis Haybert, Haysbert. Great episode um, as the Flash decides to represent Jon Stewart in this tribunal, this little farce of a court thing that um blames john for destroying this world but the whole saying if the ring wasn't lit we must acquit or something like that i don't know that was, that was <laughs> <what I said. laughs> but um we got the introduction of the guardians we got to see the guardians which are from green lantern number one volume two not the uh golden age l uh, version 1960 so, and the Manhunters there, which were voiced by James Remar. You know him from Mortal Kombat 2 as Raiden or Dexter's dad oh. from the Dexter Showtime show. Manhunters were from Justice League of America 140, 1977. Cool. And then they also had some uh, little crossovers into like Static Shock here. There's three of them. Uh, Two-part story arc, A League of Their Own, which had the Justice Leaguers. And then they, he also had um, Fallen Hero, which had 
Sinestro. Um, a static shock here. Static. Virgil Hawkins was introduced in Static number one, 1993. He was also voiced by Phil Lamar. Which I'm not sure if I... Maybe I'll do a blast on a pass for this, too. I mean, it had four seasons. 52 episodes. Yeah. It's not bad. And then later on, we'll see him again in Justice League Unlimited. And some other shows like Batman Beyond. All that. All right, here's the Justice Lords. Um... I'm not sure. I, I like the Justice Lords. This was the whole story arc with Doomsday and the killing of Luthor as, as Luthor was president and such. Yeah. But I think the crime syndicate would have been kind of cool too. Instead of exact double games. But the Batman intellect showdown was good between each other. Between the uh, the Justice Lord version and the Justice League version. All right, moving into the villains. The first story arc was the White Martians, which um, came from JLA, number one, back in the day. Which is this story arc right here. Which at the time was a pretty popular series. Still to this day has some really good story arcs out of it. Rock of Ages and all that. We got everyone's favorite badass, Dark Side here. Whoever would have thought he came from Forever People number one, 1971. He was voiced by. Can you take a guess, Charles? Huh? Can I, can I throw you, it out there first? Who do you think voiced him? Uh, Michael Ironside. Good job. Nice. Sam Fisher. <laughs> yep. We had to saw it here. He's from Forever People number two, 1971. Also, uh, I'm not going to pronounce the guy. Rene A. I'm going to say it's a voice actor. Um, he's probably watching the show. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Calabac here, <laughs> New Gods one, 1971. Michael Dorn. Some of these issues are not that uh, not that expensive. Probably worth picking up. Um, this is the good old Jack Kirby days. These characters that were created. Oh. Uh, New God 7 was the introduction of uh, Stefan Wolf. Which we know him as the badass in uh, the bad guy. Justice League. Doesn't look like this guy though. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> um, so, New God 7, 1972. Also uh, voiced by Rene A. Uh, Brainiac, again from Superman animated series. Great job on Brainiac. I enjoyed the the story arcs with him and Luthor. Um, the one from Unlimited was really good. How about you, Charles? Oh yeah, yeah. I was I was find the uh, the Brainiac episode uh, very interesting, action packed. Kind of like this version, the way he looks better than I know the original one had the three dots on his forehead, which is there was something about this one. I, I was I got so used to, so I liked it better. Yeah, than his original look. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I mean, if you if you go back and if you've watched a lot of the the DC stuff, you had the Super Friends version, which is the one from the Action Comics here, two forty two came out in nineteen fifty eight. Um, and then we had the robotic, you know, Terminator-like from Superpowers. And then he, you know, he morphed again into, like, this form from Animated. And I think it works. Um, voice actor was Corey yeah. Burton. Uh, Doomsday here. He came out in uh, 1992 in Superman, Man of Steel 18, even though he had a cameo in 17. Um, Definitely um, a, a badass character. I've, I've, I loved this yeah. issue just for the fact that he's got one hand, he's got one arm tied behind his back, and he's still just destroying stuff. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's interesting. Unfortunately, well, I mean, this has been out for a while. I do recommend checking it out, even though I'm going to spoil stuff. But um, the lobotomy, 
that he gets from I think it's the Justice Lord Superman. Um, was quick. Yeah. It was quick. Uh, not really a huge fight, but you get to see the return of Doomsday, and uh, he doesn't forget anything. Uh, so I, that was that was a great battle between him and um, Superman later on that we'll see. And uh, I think it's in, in Lim- Just League Unlimited. I'm not sure which season. I think it's first season. Uh, Mongol here. Oh, um, going back to Doomsday, he is voiced by, who do you think, Charles? Can you go two for two? Uh, I don't remember. He played Spawn. That's your clue. The live action Spawn. Um, uh, I can't. I, I think I know who it is. I just it, his name is. <laughs> I can't think. I can, I, I know. I think I know who it is. Just his three names. I'm trying to. Michael J. White. Yep. There you go. Uh, Mongol here. That I had no clue. <laughs> Mongol, you don't know who Mongol is? Come on. Uh, not Mongol. Uh, that. Uh, Oh, that, uh, Michael J. White voice. Yeah, yeah, that I didn't know. Uh, how about how about Mongol here? You know who voiced him? Uh uh-uh. uh Best of the best. Sisters Julia Roberts. Celebrity rehab. <laughs> guess I don't know. <laughs> Daughters of nah. Scream Queen, I guess. Eric Roberts. No. DC. No, you don't. All right. DC presents 27, 1980. Not a clue. All right. How about Despero? Justice League of America number one, 1960. Do you know who he's voiced by? No, I barely remember that episode. All right. He's voiced by Keith David. I don't what he sound like. So. I think Keith David, didn't he do a voiceover in the beginning of Justice League or during the theme or something? I remember. Or, uh, I don't know. Who knows. Uh, we got Vandal Savage here. Which, um, I enjoyed this Vandal Savage. Uh, more than Young Justice, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, just the way he was. Um, he's voiced by Phil Morris, uh, Green Lantern, 10, 1943. And I, I like the Hereafter episode where Superman meets up with him, and he's like hesitant, like you're, you're Vandal Savage. He's like, yeah, I know. It's like I'm, I'm a good guy. I, you know, I've been alone for a long time here, so I, you know, I'm. A little bonkers, but I want to help you because what's the point of ruling all this that you see when there's no one here? Everyone's gone. Yeah. Just me. So kind of like that. Where the I mean he's calculative in the young justice and you know, but I don't know, a little too much. Uh I like the redemption at times. All right, we have Hades here. Uh one Roman sixteen, nineteen forty six. John Reyes Davis Davies uh, voiced him. And I'm not sure. I got to go back and watch the episode, but it, it, I swear it's the episode with Felix Faust. Faust, whatever. Um, yeah. That I, I swear so. that he is or claims to be the father of Wonder Woman. Something. I don't know. Or help, helped in the deed somehow. Or I don't know. Um, yeah. If I remember correctly, but. Uh, Mazo, which is different, they uh, decided to not do the original comic book look in his kind of green leotard looking outfit, um, kind of elf look, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but they went with this more humanoid, robotic, all silver. All you see is his eyes. But each yeah. time he's using the powers, it's pretty cool because his body would animate it. Kind of like a T-1000. Yeah. So that was, that's pretty cool. Um, Amazo here is Brave and the Bold, 30, 1960s. Uh, he's voiced by uh, Robert Picardo. And then we have the Injustice gang here. 
this is not the get along gang, but could be, maybe. I don't know. Uh, they were um, first introduced in Justice League of America number 111, 1974. This iteration in the Justice League consisted of Lex Luthor, Ultra Humanite, uh, Solomon Grundy, Shade, Cheetah, Star Sapphire, and Copperhead. The Joker tried to get in, but they kicked his ass out because he's a little too uh, <laughs> nutty. But good episode also. Luthor here, introduced in Action Comics 23, 1940. You know who voiced Luthor. Come on. Come on, Charles. No mm. cheat. No, no cheat. <laughs> who do you think? He's in the new Pun. He's in the Punisher series. Hell, he was in the Flash series. He was General I Eiling. Uh, I hadn't seen any, either one of them, so I wouldn't oh. know. Uh, Highlander. The original. Adrian Paul? Original Highlander. No. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Christopher Lambert. No, not the original uh, in the movie. Original Highlander movie villain. All right, it's Clancy Brown. Okay, I, th I think broke. I know that. <laughs> just broke my heart. <laughs> totally just broke. <laughs> All right. Okay, moving on. <laughs> How about Solomon Grundy? Please, you know who this is, right? All American Comics sixty one. Oh yeah. Who's the voice of him? Not a clue. Not a clue. He voiced Joker here. Oh, uh, 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 Mark Hamill. Yes, he did. Huh. I thought he just. I thought he just did did uh, Joker. No, he did Solomon too. So, uh, uh, for all you uh, born on a Monday, died died on Tuesday. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna get into the. Oh, there, but yeah. Um, yeah. Good, good story arc, though. We're going to look at a little snippet from one of uh, them, which um, involved him and Hot Girl, which was really great. It was the uh, the Terror Beyond. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was good. Ultra Humanite here. It's from Action Comics, number 13, 1939. Um, Ian Buchanan. Uh, Star Sapphire here. Green Lantern, Volume 2, 16, 1962. Oh, Olive Diab Diabo, I think. Carol Ferris, essentially. Yeah. This is the um, second Cheetah um, from Wonder Woman 7 that came out in 1987. This is the Minerva Cheetah, not the uh, other one. She's voiced by uh, Cheryl Lee Ralph. So, oh, yeah. that? Um. Let's see. What else we got? We have Shade here. I'm going to try and rifle through this because we still have the toys. Um, Flash Comics 33. He was a kind of an interesting character. Wish they would have done a little more with him. Uh, Copperhead. Brave and the Bold. As you see there, 78. Don't remember him actually uh, doing that, though. Serious, but. He was actually voiced by two different actors. Interesting. Huh. Uh, Joker there, obviously, you know, who voiced him. Oh, yeah. So. And he had a couple of uh, couple of episodes, which I liked, too. Batman number one, uh, 1940. Which um, is pretty good. And we have another group here, Secret Society of Supervillains. Uh, they were released... Uh, in this cell. What did they? Yeah. Um, and number one in 1976. They consist of Gorilla Grodd, Sinestro, uh, Giganta, Killer Frost, Shade, came over to this side, Clayface, Parasite. I actually just picked this up for a cheap price. It's only like five bucks. Oh. It's kind of nice. In good condition, too. Good as in, like, near mint. You say good, it's like, 
standard of other stuff. But uh, Gorilla Grodd, Flash. I did like Gorilla City, the story arc with that and um, Salamatar and all that. But um, Flash 106, 1959, voiced by Powers Booth. Sinestro. Green Lantern Volume 2, number 7, 1961, Ted Levine. Giganta. Um, again, Wonder Woman. Uh, first volume of Wonder Woman, number 9, 10 cents. Damn, 10 cents. Huh. Stuff is so cheap back in the day. Um, yeah. But well, that came out in 1944. Jennifer Hale. For Parasite. Again, we saw him from the Superman animated series. This is the um, different version. There's a couple of versions of Parasite, but this is the second version. He came from Firestorm Volume 2, 1987, number 58. Brian George was a voice actor. Killer Frost, again, there's different versions of Killer Frost. This is not the Caitlin Snow. This is the uh, Louise, Louisa Lincoln. This is the Lincoln version. So she came from Firestorm Volume 2, number 21, 1984. Again, voiced by Jennifer Hale. Clayface. This is the Matt Hagen version, one that we saw from Batman Animated Series, Detective Comics 298, 1961, voiced by Ron Perlman again. Hmm. And uh, we got Toy Man here. So. Oh, man, I got a lot of these guys. Action at Comics 64, 1943. Corey Burton again. This is a different version of Toy Man. Felix Faust. Faust. Justice League of America, number 10, 1962. Can you guess who voiced him? He's in All Your Nightmares. You know? No idea. Come on. Nice 80s horror. Like stripes. Wears a cool looking glove. Hat. I know. He, yeah, I, I can't think of the guy's name. Robert England. Ah. Um, Arisa. Arisia, I think. Uh, she was introduced in Infinity Inc. 35, 1987. Um, she is voiced by Julie Bowman, but um, in the comic book, she's actually named Fury in a different continuity. She is the daughter of the Golden Age Wonder Woman, Trevor, um, Steve Trevor. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And um, and the episode, I believe, is called Fury, the story arc. So it's a nice little nod to her character in the comic books. Oh. She is one of the um, Themyscirians that got kind of booted out. And this is the episode she teams up with Star Sapphire and some of the other Injustice gang members, along with, um, we had, we know her as a two, uh, what, what the hell is her name? Sekiri, I believe, but it's Katana. So, all right there. Brave and the Bold, 200, 1983. I picked this up for a cheap price, too. So that's nice. Um, Tallow, again, went over from Superman Animated. Action Comics yep. 252, 1959, Corey Burton again. Dr. Destiny, Justice League of America, num uh, Volume 1, Number 5, 1961, William Atherton. This character was interesting. Yeah, that was a, that was a pretty cool episode with him and Batman. Yep. Kind of reminded me of like a scarecrow type of character, but um, yeah, Poison Ivy, yeah, uh, Batman 181, 1966, Diane Pierce, uh, Perishing. I do have this issue, which is quite nice. It's one of my rarest Batmans I own. Sad, huh. um, I need more. Um, Justice League of America, um. Number 43 from 1966. This is the introduction of the Royal Flush Gang. This is the other episode with Joker. And it also has Harley Quinn, where they put a whole bunch of explosive devices in, I think it was Las Vegas. And they're, the JLAs are, uh, beleaguers are running all over the place trying to defuse them. But um, 
the Royal Flush Ganger consists of like an ace, a king, a queen, a jack, and a ten. Makes up their team. I borrowed it from Batman Beyond. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, got Harley Quinn here. Batman animated, or Batman Adventures number 12 was her introduction, which was pretty cool. Um, this is one, I'm, I'm glad I picked up this issue. Thank God. Um, it's one of those issues where you're like, holy shit, what? This thing's worth how much? And you go and look for it, and you're like, yes, I have it. Um, this <laughs> came out in 1993. Arlene Sorkin, the original voice actress, played her, which is cool. I do like that. Um, there's not a lot of characters that have been introduced in the last like 20 years, I say, that have been 20, yeah, 20 years that have been really taken mainstream, like Harley, like maybe Deadpool. Yeah. Um, and you see that ref that reflection in their value of their comic. Most of the time, it's like, oh yeah, it spikes a little bit, but it doesn't really like skyrocket. So it's pretty cool. Uh, we got the Weather Wizard. Again, he was from Flash 110, 1959. That's the one with Wally West and all that. And then we have some made for TV only. So like Luminous here was only, he was uh, made for the Superman animated series along with Volcana. And then we have some story arcs, which is um, pretty cool. This is the Star Crossed. This was the um, finale for season two, Justice League, where the Thanagarians are coming to Earth, trick the Earth, um, Earthlings, and the Justice Leaguers thinking that they're going to help them, but they actually uh, needed the planet for their own uh, selfish reasons. Yeah. But we also got to see. Um, What's his? I forgot his name. Hero Talik, which is a cool anagram for Cater Hall, Hawkman. Um, we got a nice little kind of uh, whoops, you kissing my girl, and what the hell? And so Green Lantern just like pissed off and all that. It was, it was quite entertaining. And then we got to see John Jones really go to town on this guy. Just mind fucked him big time. <laughs> Turned him into a vegetable. The first time yeah. we ever saw him use his powers that way um kind of reminded me uh, or if you've watched young justice with um what miss martin has miss martian used to do or started to do with um interrogation uh, just leave him a freaking drooling mess yeah, yeah. what you got to see manhunter do and such it's a good story arc we get to see um batman be the the hero and superman we get to see their kind of relationship kind of Blossom a little more, I guess. I don't know. And then again, like I said before, we get to see them in their normal or their alter egos. Yeah. So no chemistry yet. I know that um, Batman and Wonder Woman started to get closer, but we didn't get into that until Justice League Unlimited, especially with the whole Cersei and Wonder Woman turning into a pig. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Classic, classic, classic episode. And um, and because of the whole stuff that Hot Girl did, the leaguers um had to vote whether or not she was going to stay. Um, and I believe that they voted yes, but she decided to leave. And after that, we never got to see her in her costume. She just wore a yellow jumpsuit when she came back in Unlimited. Yeah, and they had a tender, they had a tender moment, and I think this was at Wayne Manor. Um, John saying goodbye to Shaira, but he bounced back. No worries, he got a little vixen on the side. So <laughs> that was that was awkward too that they did that also in the next series. Like, wow, all right. Um, and this is the hereafter episode, which Vandal Savage and Lobo and all that you got to see Superman with a beard. Uh, this is the one I was telling you about with Solomon Grundy, where he actually dies. And it was a whole spiritual thing for Hot Girl, believing in all the supernatural type of stuff. So I thought that was interesting also. Don't worry, he comes back as a minor yeah. fruit. Um, a good Christmas episode, the uh, Comfort and Joy 
Smallville here decides to take uh, Manhunter back to his house for Christmas. He gets a sweater from Ma Kent, and they sing some weird ass native song. Sounds like he's torturing a cat. Uh, but Flash here gets help from Ultra Humanite, which was pretty cool with this little ducky doll. And then uh, Green Lantern and Hot Girl get into a nice little bar fight. All right, moving into the toys. Toys came out in 2003 and never stopped. First wave, we got the original seven members from the show, the Leaguers, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Manhunter, Green Lantern, Flash, and um, Hot Girl. Articulation-wise, eh. Um, we got five points of articulation, so your standard Star Wars figs, figures. I know people don't like me saying figs. Um, and they're also four inches in height. They all came with a stand back in the day, so you could unify them together, create this nice little kind of diorama piece. It was nice that Hot Girl did come with her mace. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get a power battery for uh, Stuart there. Did get some variants in there. We got the uh, black suit, silver emblem of Batman, and we got a darker blue suit for Superman. And then there were some deluxe figures, two packs. So we got a uh, Night Flight Batman and Superman. And then we also got Superman versus Assault Armor Lex Luthor, which was the only Lex Luthor you could get in the original Justice League toy oh. series. And you got that classic looking armor. They rocked. Superpowers and such. More deluxe figures. The Power Escape Superman. Yeah, these are going to be a lot of redecos and a lot of just reused accessory pieces that we're going to look at. So Batman. Bust. Or Crime Bust Batman. Then we have the attack armor. We have Batman Superman. Um, the next wave started to give us articulation in the knees and in the elbows it was hit or miss at times with some of them but they started to become more and more frequent but um again part of the attack armor hot girl uh, we have green lantern martian man hunter that's pretty cool the martian man hunter you can actually get without him being in his i guess superhero look his native look is what you got him in so. yeah Mega armor and Batman, Superman. You got the Flash this time. <laughs> Again, I, I don't know why Superman needs this type of stuff, but <laughs> yeah. Um, we got Dark Side finally in the Mission Vision uh, series. Two different versions of Dark Side. The normal version, the the easier to obtain was the gray faced, and then you had the variant, which was the white faced. And then uh, we also had Batman, two different versions of Batman with lenticular um, accessory pieces, move, moving picture um, for you all out there. So again, uh, the Mission Vision Batman is exactly the same as what we got with the Mega Armor. So they redecoed. But you can see that he's got the articulation now in the elbows and in the knees. I think I remember getting these because of I wanted the articulation. I just, I just scrapped all that crap. Um, I like the figures, but they don't stand with the dam at times. Huh. But um, uh, Miss uh, Mission Vision uh, Flash came out. He also had a, a two different versions of Flash. One was one that we've already seen in the um, the armor. In the armor, right? Yeah, the mega armor. And then um, a new one where he comes with this spinning kind of, not a top, but a spinning base. Put him on there, pull the drawstring, and he spins around. Uh, Green Lantern. Boxing glove looking thing. It's funny. Uh, and Superman comes with two different versions. His little breathing apparatus so he can go in space, which I thought was kind of odd at times. He needed it, but and then Wonder Woman. I am happy that we got a Wonder Woman. I mean, most of the time in a boys' toy line, you don't get female characters, but we did get Hawk 
Girl and Wonder Woman. Um, we have some deluxe yeah. versions for Mission Vision, uh, Solar Cannon Superman, and we have an Attack Sled Batman. You collect any of this stuff or used to, Charles? No. I don't think I even ever remember seeing any. Oh, really? Okay. Ultra Humanite. So right now we have three villains. And that's it. (laughs) That's all we got. We had Ultra Humanite instead of Grodd. I don't get that. Um, But he was part of the morph gear. I still have him to this day. It's interesting. Uh, Morph Gear Batman. And Morph Gear Superman. Most of these were a little bit harder to come by because they're towards the tail end until they revamped it into Justice League Unlimited, which most of these will get just reissued in that line. And in this version, I forgot to mention, Green Lantern, Jon Stewart has hair. He's got the flat top. You know him in (laughs) Unlimited. He's bald. So, but uh, Morph Gear Green Lantern, Morph Gear Flash. The Flash, I've never seen. I've never seen that Flash um, ever. Uh, but again, he's got the articulation at least, so it's cool. Waist swivel now. Elbow, knee, besides the hip, shoulder, neck. Did get some four packs. First four pack had Superman, Green Lantern, Dark Side, Wonder Woman in a more metallic uh, paint app. Wonder Woman sporting the uh, cape. And then we got another set that had Superman, Green Lantern, The Flash, and Aquaman, which was about the whole Aquaman scenario. They have a breathing apparatus so they can go underwater. Then we get some vehicles. We got the Javelin 7. First release came with, or at least the, the U.S. release came with Superman. Uh, looks like you can fit two two figures in there. Splits apart. Pretty cool looking. I I did like the look of the javelin. Yeah. Um, back then. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then um, second release, which I don't. Re- I I think this was released here, but this is a this is a, a foreign box or multilingual box. So it was probably released here also. But this one did not come with Superman. It came with Flash. And this is part of the Mission Vision series. And then part of the Mission Vision series also for Justice League, we got three motorcycle vehicles for uh, one for Batman, which makes sense. Green Lantern, I I guess. And then Flash, because I guess he got tired and needed a motorcycle. So (laughs) he got one. It's interesting. And then lastly, we got the Watchtower. Which was twenty four inches tall. Wow. Of, um, which basically was just panels that opened up that turned into platforms for your figures to stand on. Unfortunately, that's not too much, but it's pretty cool, pretty large at least for back then. Uh, it, again, being in two thousand three, didn't really have a lot of of um, play sets. Most of the stuff is fairly inexpensive as far as the figures are concerned because they were re-released in the Unlimited series. Some of the vehicles, though, can be expensive, not expensive, depending on what you want as far as mint seal box. Um, probably the most expensive thing here is that watchtower. So, And then if you, you like big is better, you got some 10-inch, 10-and-a-half-inch uh, I think they're 10 and a half, 10? No, they're 10-inch uh, figures, which are basically just upsized versions of the Series 1. So you got two two packs. One comes with Batman, Green Lantern. The other one comes with Superman and the Flash. These are better than the bathtub toys that we get now. I <laughs> just say that much. Um, or you can get them in single packs, which are uh, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Hot Girl. Hot Girl probably is the most is the hardest one to find. They do come with a base. Or a stand, but the hot girl is the hardest one in this line, in this packaging. You can find her easily in the Justice League. Yeah. Uh, you also get the Flash. You also get Green Lantern, Martian Manhunter, and Aquaman with the hook. 
that's it. So there you go. Last one passed. Justice League. Um, I enjoyed the series. I'm getting my kids hooked on it. Um, they like it. Uh, I mean, my, my daughter at least does. Um, my son, my son's more into Dragon Ball and all that type of stuff. <laughs> yeah. But, um, good series. Do you, I mean, what do you think, Charles? Do you think it's a good series worth recommending? Um, uh, most definitely hands, hands down is just great. Se- all around series. When I, I need, I need really need to get back into it. There's a lot of, Everything. Yeah, it is um, um, uh, most definite recommend, major recommend. Yeah, definitely. I uh, definitely would check it out. And if you are a fan of other characters, uh, they didn't disappoint. That the next, what the son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, fellas. I Chris, just came back in. I'm sorry. I just came back in for the theaters. I had the opportunity to go Ooh. see Thor. Oh yes, uh, about half off. So, so yeah. Oh nice, uh-huh. cool. Glad you, you glad you showed. Up. Okay, we're starting the show over. Here we go. <laughs> but no, I, I see y'all were talking about uh, the Justice League. Yes. Um. Have you have you seen it? I'm assuming. Not yet. I'm gonna try to go check that out tomorrow. Okay, no, okay, not the movie. We didn't talk about Justice League the movie. Oh, okay. Didn't want to spoil. We were talking about the cartoon. Yes. Fan of it? Saw it? Seen it? A fan of it. All right, cool. Nice. Um, we were just talking about the first um, series, not Unlimited, but talking more okay. about the first one. But um, would you recommend it? Yes, I would. All right, cool. Um, any favorite stories or anything about it? <laughs> Uh, probably my favorite, let's see, what was my favorite one? Um, the episode where they had to help Darkseid because Brainiac had invaded and was threatening to take over Apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> Just to yeah. see Superman try to rush up on Darkseid was ready to start swinging fists. Yeah, I remember that one. That was a good one. Mm-hmm. And then the whole Batman be like, oh yeah, Dark Side kidnapped you, wound you up, and turned you loose on Earth. Cry me a river. I just wish Clark would tell him, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I just want Superman to tell Batman to just shut up one time. <laughs> yeah, you do see Batman going at Superman more like... Um, like the whole thing has like the star cross where he decided to drop the watchtower onto the Thanagarians like main yeah. hub or something. And, you know, he that did, was a good, that was, that good. was a, yeah, that was a great two part right there. Um, or, you know, always saying, always talking to Superman, like you're the boy scout, you know, always be yeah. the boy scout or, or the one, but we'll we'll talk about it when we talk about unlimited. But the whole like, I took a bullet for you today. You can't say nothing. I took a bullet for you. The whole taking that kryptonite missile out himself. Yeah. During the whole uh, doomsday uh, story, but um. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Charles, have you seen Thor? Ragnarok. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. Uh. All right. Cool. So we've all seen it now. I'm gonna yep. I'm gonna start I'm gonna start with you. Um, favorite part of it, and what would you rate it on a scale of one to ten? Seven point five. All right, and uh, a highlight for you out of it. Uh, I didn't hear. <laughs> What was a highlight for you? Uh, probably the interaction with, with Thor and Hulk. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kind, kind of wish their their fight would have been longer, though. I would like the like the the nods to the Planet Hulk movie, the little animated movie. Yeah. Yeah. A lot a lot of nods to it. Yeah. All right. Trent, how about you, man? 
Um, I give it a solid eight. I like that kind of stuff anyway. You know, you got uh, space, uh, space and superhero and super beings just go together like peanut butter and jelly. Oh, okay. and, my, and my favorite part was probably the arena. Same as Charles, the arena fight between Hulk and Thor when Thor finally, like, uh, you know, got his lightning powers and you know was actually providing an adequate challenge for the Hulk. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So you're a so you're a Guardians fan, I'm assuming. Yeah, the Guardians they they're good. All right. Cool. All right. For me, I gave it a I think I gave it a six. Did I give it a six? I don't remember what I gave it. It said it on ETR. I think it was a six. Something like that. Uh, favorite part for me, though, um, I don't know. Could be. I kind of like the it's the the humor, but it was just I, I like the nod, but the whole um, Willy Wonka, mm-hmm. the Chocolate Factory um, little. Uh, the little thing where Thor's going on the little like ride to meet the Grandmaster. Yeah. <laughs> and the music and all that type of stuff. And he's freaking out and he screams at the end. <laughs> I like that. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a good one. But, all right, cool. Um, uh, Let's see. I think that's about it. Um, unless there's some other stuff you guys want to talk about. Like, if you want us to do what you do, the show, Trans We Can. I mean, I'm I'm game for it. I'm just, <laughs> you just put in three hours or something so we can uh-huh. do it for you. Um, so are you saving unlimited for another episode for uh, next another episode? Yeah. I was just okay. there's just too much. I mean, I wanted to Punisher dropped on Friday, so I'm like, oh man, I need to watch that. Yeah. And then I need to watch Justice League and then there's some other stuff and I decided to uh, just do Justice League. Because mm-hmm. there's a there's a ton of Justice League Unlimited is great, and I want to give it the the amount of love that it deserves because there's characters in there that I absolutely I mean, like Captain Adam is one of my favorite DC characters. Captain Marvel, yeah. Hawkman, um, and the story arc with like Captain Marvel and how it tied into the actual comic books and all that. I like that. And mm-hmm. um, but the toys though, there's a ton of toys because there was a multitude of like like six packs that came out or box sets three packs and that's just a lot of work <laughs> to get all those pictures so i just i haven't done it yet so i i threw up the lazy card and just decided to be the one um so that's about it but yes we will we will go over that um and we probably will go over static shock um cool series um, not too familiar with it i went and i know we still need to go over batman beyond or did we did we go over batman beyond I don't remember. I know we did the animated series. I don't think we ever did. No, I don't think we did either. So we need to do that. So um, yeah. Uh, and I know there's and there's other things I, I'm planning on doing, not just from the '80s. Uh, well, maybe we'll dip into the '70s and we'll dip into other things that's not cartoon related. Also, we will. I I, I do want to do um, a. Since Brian didn't know who the, the horsemen were, um, kind of a WCW, AWA, old school NWA, all that type of what? stuff, type of show, blast from the past, and just go over some of the, <laughs> the wrestlers in the day and uh, stories and um, what transpired and what actually, um, I mean, came about. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll 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 uh, we'll talk about it. I guess that's it. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, I do appreciate it. We'll do some outros here. So, Charles, start us off. All right. Uh, finally, mostly on, on Instagram and Casey on Twitter at Optimus 4 Prez. Go. Trent, where can they find you? Find me Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Trent5. Nice. And you can find me, Victory Saber 77 on Instagram. And on uh, YouTube and Facebook. And every Saturday, again, Plastic Fanatics, don't forget to like, subscribe. Um, just hit the like button. Don't forget to check out all the rest of the Cool Table Network shows. I have descriptions or links in the, links in the description. 
um, and all that type of stuff. Um, it's the support we 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 thank you for it and all that. Um, check out uh, RealmCollector.com for new merchandise. I know I kind of butchered it in the beginning, but um, there is new uh, merchandise over there. And if you missed out on a pullover, sorry. Um, but other than that, that's, that's it. Um, I'm not sure if there's going to be a show next week, uh, just because it's Thanksgiving weekend. Um, mm -hmm. So that's all. Other than that, though, um, yeah. Anything else? Um, have a good Thanksgiving if you are celebrating Thanksgiving. Have a safe one. Enjoy the family. Um, or just whatever. For me, it's hungry man all the way. Yeah, turkey. I'm um, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do, but it should be fun. So that's it. Adios. Um, Later. What else is there? Oh, what else did I want to mention? I forgot to mention in the beginning. Um, shout out to Knight of Wren. I think it's, uh, I, I saw a post. It's his birthday. So happy birthday to you, man. Happy birthday. And then happy birthday happy, to happy just birthday, one. Ren. Just one has a birthday. Coming this Monday. So tune in to ETR. He's going to be on there. I'm not sure if he's um, going to do what he said he's going to do. Get just shit faced or he's going to do whatever. I don't know, but it's his birthday. So uh, shout out to just there also. Um, and Pinkerton had a birthday also a couple weeks ago. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll do shout outs in the beginning and I'll do birthday shout outs at the end. Yeah. I don't know. I'm bored. Mm. I should, I should just push the button, but I'm going to play this <laughs> kind of weapon stand that we get with fans project. All right. Yeah. That's it. I'm pushing it. Oh, push. Awesome. All right. I push.